welcome you all to the house of our Father for this time of season to worship and to be praised and give thanks for the blessing of the birth of his son. I'd like to welcome you all and have the Kemp family here from Nashville, Tennessee passing through and it's always a pleasure to be reminded that God's Spirit works with people everywhere. And it's nice to know that we aren't alone. There are like-minded and kindred spirits being touched and guided by God. Jason, Lisa, and Kaya, did I get all that right? Good. Good to have you all here. Welcome you back anytime. But I guess you're just passing through visiting. Well, do it again sometime. It's good to have you. You know, uh, we have a wonderful time together. It kind of reminds me of, it It'd be a particular blessing to me to hear God tell me, like he's told others, come, let us reason together. Can you imagine sitting down with Jesus Christ and God and reasoning together? God, why did you send Jonah there? Or why did you send me there? We'd get answers to questions like that and know even more personally, our Heavenly Father, like we're supposed to be doing now. So it's good for us to come together in Sunday school class and to socialize. It's, that's supposed to be kind of what Zion is going to be like, give you a taste of it. So we invite you to the taste of some of our Zionic gathering and fellowship with our fellowship dinner each month. You know, they used to have back in the day some of those programs where you couldn't do the rule of three I think you had to talk to three people before you could leave and go home <laughs> well that's kind of a rule it'd be much better if it came from the heart but I encourage all of you to do that and there's Miss Lydia and Miss Helen good to see both of y'all and Master Paul he's getting out in this cold weather good to have you you know, today or this month, uh, some people of our group share a birthday month with our baby Jesus, Janice Riley. Happy birthday. Belated. <laughs> Kenny Wells back there. Wow. Rhonda Lucas, Hal McGinnis, Lou Ann McCartney. Look at there. On the 14th, Shirley Todd, and I understand she's still... Uh, be in rehabilitation, getting better after her fall. Keep you all, keep her in your prayers. Don, happy birthday. He's uh, our birthday, our Christmas baby. Born on the 25th. Give him a special pat on the back, I guess. Whereas my pastor's more willing to do than I. You can have my dessert whenever. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you've been thankful ever since? Well, not the first 10 years, anyway. <laughs> well, there's some of our birthday people. And I, you wonder why I might take the time to do that now. Because God tells us when we get to know people and we can see them as he sees them, we can come to truly love them as he loves them, which gives us better insight into how much he loves us. So as we worship and praise God for the birth of Jesus Christ and his coming and the purpose of it, it ought to bring up memories in our heart that this was also for us. There's a song here. 116, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I really like this song because it starts out like most of us do in the real world, seeing how dark it is. And it is until we dwell on some of that sometimes that the true light of God comes and brightens our day and shows us that there is, as he puts it, peace on earth and goodwill to men. Hymn 116.
call to worship is from the 34th Psalm and it calls us to true praise and thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father for we're told in this Psalm the words on our lips I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I take you now to that field where the first angel message of goodwill and peace to mankind. 121.
let us pray. O oh God, our eternal and loving Heavenly Father, we approach you this morning in thanksgiving in the name of your Son, Jesus the Living Christ. Many, many rejoiced when Jesus was born and they were there and they saw it. May we rejoice this very day and in the days to come. May we truthfully rejoice in the hope of our day to respond to your request to be obedient. We thank you for those who were obedient and came to your invitation to be here today in your house so we can sing praises and hear the word. But oh, we have all been blessed because of it. May the words that we will receive today from our brother wear on us like a tailored suit. May we uh, embrace and uh, digest what's coming. And we thank you for our church. And we thank you for the presence of those who are here today. And we would ask that we would att lend a, an attentive ear to those things which are going to be brought to us. And we do this all in the holy, sacred, and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the living Christ. Amen. <laughs> I have a couple of scripture readings this morning I'd like to share with you. First, I'm familiar, but they're both going to be very familiar with you, with you regarding this story and the reason for our celebration this week. First comes from the second chapter of Luke, verses 7 through 16. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was none to give room for them in the inns. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. <clears throat> and this is the way you shall find the babe. He is wrapped in swaddling clothes and is lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with a, the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. And it came to pass, when the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And the second one is a proverb, third Proverbs, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy might, heart, and lean not unto him with thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The great hymns capture great moments, great 
feelings of inspiration and message. Sometimes in our life we're truly, we've often heard it, speechless. Those moments of silence brought on by awe, love, you know, we look at something and can't quite comprehend it all, and we're silent. Such is a moment that is captured in Hymn 120. Good morning. <laughs> Merry Christmas early, too, as well. Just three days left, clocking them off. Uh, time does move on very fast. Uh, I, out on the wall here, there's pictures of senior citizens visiting with Santa, yet at their age. I suppose they're asking, you know, what do you want for Christmas? You know, like us parents always took our kids, and that was the list, what do you want for Christmas? And they told Santa. I was thinking this morning, you know, as you get older, you want less, I think, or you need less, maybe, or something. But uh, if, if I was asked that question or was on a lap this morning, I would say, what would you want for Christmas? It would be Noel, Noel, to know him, to know him. In this coming new year, that's going to be kind of my mantra, <laughs> to have that closer walk 
with not only Christ, but God, represented through Christ, and the Holy Spirit. I'll wrap the Trinity there and be more sensitive to their leadings in my lives. Uh, of course, Christmas time brings back memories and fond memories and different things about different ones. But um, so I'm going to, it's going to be a conglomeration of thoughts this morning and hopefully it'll all gel. Uh, and I, I'm kind of a creature of habit and I was expecting to sing my special between the scripture and my message. So I hope I have a, a voice left to sing at the end as well. But, um, and then we got up early thinking we were all ready. We got here early and I forgot something I was going to bring as a centerpiece as well, but this will work. So uh, that's kind of a resolution I'm going to have in the new year as well. Let go, let God, and things will work out as he deems necessary. But my message this morning kind of contains five essential ingredients or parts. First, uh, you can't, I can't not speak with a few family antidotes. <laughs> A grand, grandpa, grandpa, father. But, uh, and secondly, to speak to the hymns and the carols of the season. I think after singing Silent Night with the last verse, us singing it a cappella, we could have just closed for the day and went home. How beautiful those songs are. Not that the secular Christmas songs aren't bad, it's just that the carols and the hymns have such a significance, a burning significance in our lives at this time of the year. Thirdly, I'd like to just visit with just a few of the synonyms that are associated with the Jesus, or the name Jesus. Fourthly, speak a little bit about the light, and the very many references that are uh, in the scriptures about the light, him being the light. A new star was created at his birth, uh, being the light on the candlestick. There are just numerous instances of that light. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my mantra will be developing a personal relationship with my Creator now and in this season and into the new year to a better degree. In our neighborhoods, I suppose you do, in your neighborhoods as well, there's lots of lights in the Christmas lights and the decorations. Again, lights, <laughs> but more commercial. And, and I think it's been a kind of a mild season, so we've had our outside lights up and down three, if not four times. <laughs> I don't know if some years, through, the, through a year's process, some of the lights go out in a string and it never fails. You get them up or, you know. We had some string that was bright white and some that were soft white. And this never did, you know, so we up and down. Up and, down. and I think we're probably the only quirky people that put them up with gray duct electrical tape. You know, so that's just my method, but anyway. That's, uh, regardless, uh, just the lights that are associated with the season. And then, um, in our neighborhood as well, there's a, a stable made out of uh, pallets, and uh, Joseph and Mary have been distanced from the stable for quite a while. There's a star over the stable, and there's Joseph and Mary and a small little hobby horse. <laughs> it has wheels, <laughs> and, it's, and, and as the season is approaching, it gets closer to this stable, and it's this kind of cute, I thought, you sh maybe should have painted the hobby horse a little brown so it looks more like a donkey, but it's well-worn, well-used, and the intent is there. And the family moves it closer to this manger every day. And what a beautiful sight, because every time I drive by that, I see they're getting closer. The day is getting closer. Who cares about the icicle lights or the twinkling lights? Now, this is the display that really means something to me. And then... Uh, Another funny incident in our family was this year. We have a couple of nativity or quiche scenes. One is a ceramic one that Yvonne's made through the years or a long time ago. And then we bought a, what they call Playmobil, the little plastic sets the kids can play with. Well, this year, after they'd been set up and we'd had in and outs of grandkids now and then, I looked at it, I turned on the light of the one that's a ceramic, and I said, Yvonne, look at this. <laughs> and there were two baby Jesuses in this quiche, the manger. The Playmobil plastic one had been moved in with the ceramic one. And I got the connection right away because we've been blessed, <laughs> as Mylon and Lana have, to have twins in our family. So I think they think, oh, there's a baby. Let's make it even better and have two. But wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Regardless, uh, those type of things are much more important than the gifts we can give. Just simply showing our, sharing our time and our love with one another.
during the season, I kind of came up with a couple of uh, were, uh, letters of the alphabet that I wanted to mention this morning too, is the W's of waiting and watchful. And we see that throughout the story of the nativity, the shepherds were waiting. Mary waited nine months for the birth of the Christ child. Uh, the wise men waited. We wait for the, with expectation as well. And in our day and time, I'd like to reflect on that even more. We need to be watchful for his return. We need to be patient <laughs> and wait on his timetable. But we must be alert to his coming again in glory with greater light, if that's possible. I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> and we kind of see things disintegrating or falling apart at the seams, but that should not erode the foundation that is there, that is promised to be there eternally. The beautiful Christmas carols and hymns are sung and played at this time of the year, and uh, I was reflecting on the youth Christmas program last Sunday, how they integrated the songs and their various musical talents and skills. And what a blessed service we had that Sunday. I think you could all concur with that. But I want to mention just a couple of those songs again this morning. <clears throat> and perhaps some of the lyrics are words that we kind of sing, but I think we need to, we sometimes overlook it. I think that happens when we read the scriptures too. We read fast and we perhaps overlook some of the meat. But the first is, uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Who is Jesus? He is the everlasting Lord who from the highest heaven comes down to be the offspring of the virgin's womb. What, what did he come to do? His mission is to see God and sinners reconciled. God and sinners reconciled. How did he accomplish it? He laid his glory by. He sacrificed his own glory that we no more may die. He laid his glory by that we no more may die. How can this life be ours through inward spiritual regeneration so radical that as we have seen, it can be called a second birth? And I thought of your friend, have you asked him the scripture what he thinks about you must be born again. He probably has an answer for that too, but there is that second birth. This carol seems to give us a summary of the entire Christian teaching of developing that personal relationship with our Heavenly Father. Handel's Messiah, you hear that at this time of the year, beautiful rendition. Sang, used to be sang yearly at the auditorium and with volunteers. I was a volunteer one year when I was down there going to school and it was an awesome experience. And there are professional singers too that did solos and things, but uh, the verse that states, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it concludes by saying, and he shall reign forever and ever. Reflecting on my life, your life, our lives collectively as his people. Does this king reign in our lives? Is our will according to his will? A little old song I came across in studying this week or listening this week was, it's called, Methinks I See a Heavenly Host. And it's an older carol by a William Billings. And some of the lyrics read, Seek not in courts of, nor palaces, nor royal curtains draw, but search the stable, see your God extended in the straw. Bethlehem, Nazareth, humble towns. They were, the Jews were considered a lower class, a humble people. He came to them as his citizens. Uh, and I think that is part of his message too, that he comes to everyone, regardless of their stature or their abilities. And, that he wants to seek and save all. I remember the scripture, uh, can anything good come from Nazareth? And uh, the prophecy of Bethlehem, the birth being in Bethlehem. Then the final example of a carol or song is, O little town of Bethlehem, how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. 
No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive of him, the dear Christ enters in. Doesn't that echo still true today? <laughs> Think how old that song is. No ear we may not hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive of him, their dear Christ enters in. We have to be malleable and let Christ enter into our lives because he still does that. He changes people's lives. Uh, not to give up on people of Nineveh. Uh, that message is timeless. He will enter into their lives and save them if there's some salvation there. Then I mentioned light. You know, the new star occurred at his birth. And in the Book of Mormon, we see there was no, no darkness. There was light for, through the night even. And the, the scripture about being the light in the world of Canistac. And other synonyms for Jesus we hear at this season of the year. But they are eternal in nature. Again, a, last Sunday at the Christmas program, I think it was the older Beecham boy read a few of the synonyms or the list of a few of them. Um, just want to revisit a few this morning. First I mentioned was Noel, what Brother Chapin said, means to know him, to have that personal relationship with our Heavenly Father. And the second one was, comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter. Just a couple of these references, so. <clears throat> Matthew 1, 4 through 6. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Matthew 2. Typo there. Matthew 2, 4 through 6. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus or he shall save his people from their sins. Now this took place that all things might be fulfilled. Prophecy is always fulfilled, which were spoken of the Lord by the prophets saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. <laughs> Can we answer that same question affirmatively today? individually and collectively that God is with us? I hope so. <laughs> then from the Old Testament a prophecy in Isaiah Isaiah 9, 6 For unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And that one verse, it gives us five uh, synonyms for Heavenly Father and God. But the one I want to focus in on this morning is Counselor. Uh, and I, I loosely define Counselor as being a mentor or a guide or an advisor. And uh, how true that is, that, you know, the, I learn, and don't you learn, that we lean to depend on our Heavenly Father on a daily basis. And we should, because that's why he, He's there for us. But additional uh, counsel and guidance is found in the Scriptures. Uh, I think it was earlier I heard someone say the parables and all those. They're in there for a reason. Those are good. That's counsel for us in our day and time. It should be a, a teaching a tool, our scriptures, I'm sure it is, if we delve into them like we should be or should. Or should. A couple other um, le were, uh, letters of the alphabet this morning I thought about was discernment and direction. Don't we need to seek those in our lives too, in the world in which we live? Uh, there's lots of options and choices out there. But we need to be prayerful to be a discerning people, seeking his direction in our lives. Seeking that terminology, <laughs> counselor, that he is our mediator and director of our lives. Uh, this is a stretch, but I think it was last Sunday, 
uh, not really stretch, but I think it was last Sunday, Brother Brian mentioned that even in Luke 24, 12 through 31, the example of the disciples on the road to Emmaus has a, as a Christian messenger teaching to us that although those disciples had been and witnessed the death and resurrection, whatever, they did not recognize the Heavenly Father. They were walking so close to him. But once their blindness was uncovered, they were spiritually awakened and alive to know who they were walking with. And didn't their hearts burn within them, it says. And I think, you know, I don't want to ask this collectively, but I know if I visited with you individually, I know there are those times today when you have had those inklings or leadings in your lives, when you have felt that you were walking in step or in tune with your Heavenly Father. Hopefully they're more than the other, but I know I've, we all fall short in there those other times. But we have that opportunity to be walking, walking in step with our Heavenly Father and to be blessed on a daily basis. Then the last two alphabetical letters is W's. What can we do in our day and time? First would be worship, which you are doing here. And, uh, and praying for those that are few in number that have difficulty getting together with people that can worship. Uh, but the importance of worship, meeting together, it's spoken of in the scriptures. And then the second W would be witness. That's what we are called to do. We are called to live it. We, we talked about that this morning. Are we witnessing for him and his love for his creation? This uh, past week, Yvonne brought to mind a scripture she had been reading or studying. She goes, you know, this has some meat even for Christmas too, I think. And I thought, uh, yeah, that does. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up here, no pun intended, with this scripture. But it comes from Romans 12. <coughs> 12, uh, 8. I'm going to save some of my voice here. <laughs> and this is Paul's, of course, dissertation to the Romans. But he says, Or he that exhorteth an exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let him... He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Don't we get bogged down with the list and keeping the giving even and all those things? You're called to give simply. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll try and draw you a picture here. I'm not a very good artist, but of the picture I was going to bring, and I'll bring it next year. <laughs> There's a resolution. But it's a print that's not too well known of Norman Rockwell. And I'm not sure the title, but it's, we got one last Christmas from a son, and it's probably two by three. It's unframed, and I think I like it better unframed, but it's kind of dark and dreary. You think of Norman Rockwell as family uplifting, but it's a dark and dreary, rainy, foggy scene of a cathedral-type church in probably Baltimore, a big city. And, and you've seen them in the Bishop's Wife or those Christmas shows, you know, that big church. And the people are down on the street just walking, kind of hit down, and you can tell they're burdened, and the, there just seems to be no, no joy or happiness. But up on the marquee, <laughs> the minister or the priesthood person that's representing has, has put in this phrase or whatever, lift up your eyes. And so that's on our wall 24-7 throughout the year. Because, uh, you know, often you go through those dark times or those hard times, but don't let that discourage you. Because if you lift up your eyes, you will be blessed. And he will carry you and through, see you through. <clears throat> the past week, the ladies got together and had their little Christmas party and I, I was Yvonne's Uber driver so I've had to, something else to do in the city so I went to visit Sh Sister Shirley Todd at the hospital and, and we had just a short visit because I knew what it was it's hard with cracked or broken ribs to talk and visit and, and administer to her or whatever but I was uh, surprised how accepting she was she said you know I'm just going to accept it one day at a time and, I, and she said that several times and I thought 
what can I say to our uh, comforter, bring her more comfort perhaps? And I'm kind of a musical person, so I said, you know what the uh, song says? And Shirley goes, oh, and I said, I don't know about tomorrow. It may be bring me pain or poverty, but I know about tomorrow or know about the future is, I know who holds the future and I know who holds my hand. And isn't that true? And she kind of nodded on, you're right. And she still has some decisions to make her and her family, but she will be blessed in so doing. Um, remember her in your prayers. And then um, another little caveat from the women's get together. I think one of the things, of course, I haven't had my opening of my gifts and things, but one of the, and that wasn't my gift, I get it surreptitiously through Yvonne, I guess. But Yvonne brought home a handmade Christmas ornament by Sister Jackie Fox. <laughs> some of you sisters got some of those. What a beautiful expression or memory of Sister Jackie. It was such a simple thing, but it was beautiful. Jack and Jackie were, I don't know how to praise them. I shouldn't praise them. I mean, they were very affluent, and they could have flaunted that affluence. Very lived very comfortably. But I was just impressed at how often they gave those simple gifts of the Christmas ornament or candy in a tin, which we all need at this time of the year. But, uh, and I hope I'm not stepping on toes by mentioning this, but I think their greatest wish would be that we're prayerful about the reconciliation of their sons, Mike and Steve. Isn't that a parent's desire <laughs> that there's reconciliation in families? and in our church, and isn't that our Heavenly Father's desire as well? That will happen if we know Him. And that's what we gotta do, is to know Him. <clears throat> we can uh, strive to do those simple things in the lives of those that we come in contact with, and often, you know, you are prompted to do those simple things. So I would challenge you to listen to that uh, counsel you hear through the leadings of the Holy Spirit at times and move forward. That, uh, you know, there are scriptures that say the weak become strong through uh, small things, mighty things can be accomplished. I think we are living in that day and time in our age and uh, pray that you all do have uh, a, mer a hol good holiday season with your family. But uh, remember that the time and the love you show is the best and most precious gift you can give. And that uh, along me, along with you, in the new year, make that resolution to uh, develop that closer relationship with our Heavenly Father, to be in tune with His leadings in our lives. With that, I'm going to sing a song here with Mark. <laughs> or things we do for reward, but out of love and obedience to Him. It's acts of faith that we live our lives that would be pleasing to Him. So our stewardship is not just of our monies, our tithing, our oblation, our free will offering. It's of the spiritual gift which He has given to us. It's the care of our children. It's the care of one another. But it's also the sharing of edifying or uplifting acts that we can do because we're so well blessed. I can't play the radio and I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but these next two can. And I thank them for sharing their gift to their stewardship of love to their Heavenly Father. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, and order all things 
far and nigh to us the path of knowledge show and help us in her way to grow rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee all Israel O come desire of nations bind all peoples in one heart and mind bid and be strife and quarrel cease fill the whole world with heaven's peace rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee all is come with the key of david come and open wide our heavenly home where all thy saints with thee shall dwell oh come oh come emmanuel rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. For our closing hymn, we recite the scripture of Isaiah 9-6 that echoes the words just sung to us. Rejoice, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. Let us rejoice with hymn 119. Our Heavenly Father, we your people, thank you and praise your holy name for the wonderful gift of your Son that would come and die and reclaim us, that Lord through him our righteousness would be white as snow as we take upon us his righteousness, that we might be reclaimed as your sons and daughters, and that we might cry, Father, 
Lord, well up within our bosoms, thy spirit, give us peace and hope, uplift and enlighten. As we go about thy will and thy work in our life, help us, Lord, to ever be guided by your spirit, that the words that we speak and the actions that we take would reflect the light of truth which shined upon us on that night of the birth of your son as he came into our life. Bless us, we pray, Father, that we might always be your people and you might always be our God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.